this is a section I'm going to take out of this video and make into its own video where I talk about two movies that I've seen in 2020. Can you guess what they are? Onward and Trolls World Tour. Um, so I wanted to talk about Trolls first, not Trolls. I mean, let's talk about Onward first. Um, this is going to be a combo movie review section where I talk about two movies that I saw. And this is going to be Onward. Um, let's see the directing duo. I think it was two people that directed it, or just one guy. Um, I should have wrote it down before, but um, I forgot. Onward. Director. Dan Scanlon is what it says. Um, he directed Monsters University. So, Onward is directed by Dan Scanlon, who directed Monsters University before directing Onward. And it tells the story of two brothers and who are um, elves. No, they're... The frick are they? I don't know what they are. They, they're like blue elves or um, goblins or whatever. I don't know. Anyways, they live in this medieval world that's in the future where magic doesn't exist anymore. And everything's technology. And the cars, light switches, whatever. So, Ian, I believe his name is. Um, the younger brother t is turning 16. He lives at home with his mother. He lives at home with his older brother. And, um, he doesn't have a father. His father passed away before he was born. Um, so... The story of this is that... Um, he had a gift from his father that he left behind where he could be brought back for one day using a spell. The older brother tries it and the younger brother does. The older brother can't do magic. The younger brother can. So, when he accidentally um, does do the spell right, only the legs are brought back of the father. So, they go on a quest to find this um, gem to um, bring back to to redo the spell to bring back their father because he can only be back for one day. I like the story. Um, I will say this. I like the movie. Um, the animation's really well. I like the story, but I feel the story is jumbled at a lot of points. Um, I don't like the setting. I don't think it was appropriate for it to be in the future. For it, Not in the future, but I don't think it was appropriate to have like a modern setting for this movie. Because it didn't really seem to have a reason for it to be with cars and for it to be with um you know modern technology there, there there wasn't a reason for it and when you watch the movie it plays out like you'd imagine a movie like this playing out even if it was without the modern setting the modern setting just seemed to be weird and um, a weird creative choice for it because even though the characters aren't in the modern setting for a long time they're out oh they're outside in the wilderness and they're going through temp temples and stuff so there doesn't need to be a need for this modern stuff. The story could have been easily told without the modern stuff. And it was, it was kind of distracting for a while. The voice acting's good. Um, Tom Holland did the voice acting for the younger brother. Um, Chris Pratt did the voice acting for the older brother. And I hear a lot of people say this, but Jack Black should have been the older brother. And I agree, but I don't mind because I think Chris Pratt did a good job in his own rights. Um... What else can I say about this movie? It, it's been a month since I've seen it, really. And um, I don't know why I didn't do a movie review on at first. I want to do this for the podcast and do what I'm doing right now and take it out and make it its own movie review. But um, I just ne never got around to it. Um, but I do have a lot to say about it. I like the story. I like the journey these characters go on. But there's a lot it presents that doesn't seem to pay off really well. Um... There's a point where they talk about the older brother being a screw up, and the younger brother do isn't trying to say it, isn't trying to say it that he's a screw up. So they talk about it for like a minute, and then they drop it like right after. And I was like, "There's like you you, you can't bring something up like that and drop it like a, a couple minutes later. Like that that could be something really impactful for the rest of the story." Um. 
I'm not gonna spoil the movie though, because I'm pretty sure um, people haven't seen it. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people didn't want to see it. I didn't want to see it originally because I thought the trailers looked really bad. I think Pixar, more recently, is notorious for making bad trailers for their movies. All the trailers are Finding Dory for um, Toy Story 4. It's even, even onward right now. All the trailers looked terrible. And I knew I was going to see those movies, and I did. But, um... The trailers for Onward just didn't seem good. I didn't want to watch it initially. But I did with my family and I liked it. And something Pixar does really good with their movies is music and emotions. Their music is good for everything. Whether it be they're being chased down. Whether it be they're running. Whether it be they're doing an action scene. Whether it's an emotional scene. You know, the music is really good in all those aspects. And in terms of emotions, um, what Onward does is it really gets you emotional because I can never say I can experience what these characters are going through, but I can understand what the way they present it. Like they want to see their dad. They want to see their father. They're going to do it for one day, but they messed up and they have to do it. as They have to go on this journey as quick as they can. The younger brother can't, the younger brother can perform magic, but not proficiently the older brother knows how to do magic but he can't perform it like he knows all the functions of it but he can't perform it so that these two characters have to bond throughout it they have to bond throughout the course of this movie while trying to find the tr trying to find this gen to bring back their father and i like the journey they go on and i like the choice that they made at the end of it but it doesn't feel as earned as it should have because a lot of these issues that these brothers have with each other it gets they have an issue and it doesn't seem to get resolved like the screw up the screw up um side story like that seems like something really good that can happen but just it doesn't come into play later on in the story there's um a side plot involving their mom's boyfriend and he doesn't have a single place in this movie he's there for no reason at all i i didn't like his character i didn't it's not i didn't i i, I didn't not like his character i just didn't think he fit for the story like i don't know it's weird and his arc is he doesn't use a card at the end of the movie he runs because he's like a half horse half troll thing whatever like okay, good job. I'm not. I'm not trying to dog on this movie because I really liked it. It's just. It's just not Pixar's best because they're not the Pixar they used to be. But I'm glad they're making original content and not sequels, like Cars and Toy Stories. But it's a good movie in its own rights. I got really teary eyed in a couple of scenes because Pixar does a good job with their emotions. They do a good job with the music. A good story, but I just didn't like how it was presented for the most part. There's cool action. There's cool stuff with the magic scenes. I like the bond that these brothers had for the most part. I like the resolution. But it's just it's just a good movie. It's just, And that's all I can say about it. It's nowhere near their best movies. And if you want to watch it, it's on Disney+. Plus. Um, I'll give this movie a B. It's just like... It's good. That's all I can say about it. it. I like it. And on the other hand, we got another animated film that I might like just as much. Um, this is Trolls World Tour. Now, let me just say this. I don't like the first Trolls movie. I watched it back um, when it came out on like Redbox or something. No, we got it on, we got it on DVD. I think we have it on a Blu-ray. And I'll say this for the first Trolls movie. It looks really nice. And the animators did a really good job with it. I don't like anything else about it though. Trolls Trolls World Tour, however, I like the story. Um, there's six, there's like the types of music. And they all have like a string. For like a guitar or whatever. Or um, like, you know, those, those the harps that you hold. I don't know what those are. And they're split up into different kingdoms. 
and the trolls um, are being attacked by the rock and roll trolls because they want all everything to be rock and roll. And the main character, Poppy, who is now queen of the pop trolls, that's what they are, pop trolls, um, they're going on this journey to save all the strings because everything can't be rock and roll. Because, oh, pop's cool. But then it gets into the idea of, no, everyone's their own person and not everyone's going to like only one thing. You know, everyone's different. It's a good message for kids, you know. And in that aspect, I think they, they presented that idea well. And yet again, the animation here is amazing. Um, the animators had a lot of freedom to choose how to animate specific things. Um, a lot of things have a lot of fur on it. A lot of people seem like to glitch out. A lot of the trolls seem to be glitching because they're um, like, I don't know, funk, funk trolls. They seem to be like moving in a different way, not, not smoothly. Things have a lot of good fur on them. Um, just the animation is, is really well. I like the presentation of the animation. Um, I don't like the characters, however. I don't like the journey these characters go on. I don't like all the side characters that these characters have. Um, before I, before I go on, I want to know who directed this, just so I can say, because I do it with every movie review. Uh, if you want to watch this movie, it's on um, Prime, it's on VOD, whatever. Uh, Trolls 2 director. Um, when it, I watched this when it came out like a month ago. Um, and I liked it. Okay, director. My goodness. There's a lot of people. But who are the direct, who's the director? Not, tr not Troll 2. Uh, hold on. Trolls World Tour Director. Walt Dorn. Walt Dorn, uh, I believe that's it. And David P. Smith as a co-director. I believe that's it. Um, yeah, so that, that duo directed, co-directed this movie. I'll say that. Um, okay, I like the story of this movie. I don't like how the story is presented though because I don't like a lot of the side characters and I don't like the journey that these characters go on because Poppy seems a lot more naive and annoying than she did in the previous movie. Um, I don't like a lot of the music in this movie too. And um, I like the rock covers of some of the rock songs like Crazy Train um, and like Barracuda, I think. But, um, like with all the other songs, I was like, what, what, why, why, why does there have to be like a song played every 10 minutes? I know it's a musical, but the energy is up in this movie. The energy is fast and moving in this movie. Like you never get a break to just sit down and take in like what just happened. You know, um, there's like montages of the characters singing a song to, um, just, just to sing the song in the beginning of the movie. Um... When, when you see Poppy and all those characters, um, they're just singing a bunch of songs about how their day is going. And then when they get into the country, when they find the country trolls, they, um, they're like, oh, these people seem really sad because they're talking about death in their country song. So let's um, sing a bunch of pop songs. And they sing a bunch of pop songs and it's annoying. Um, but it's... That's that. That's the entire movie. Usually with musicals, the, the songs propel the plot, and they only do that once in this movie, and that's when they re that's when they um, reveal a big a big part of the movie, a big turning point in the movie, and um, with the characters in their journey. Um, but besides that, it's a lot of um, weird humor throughout this movie. But I did laugh a lot. This is a pretty funny movie, and um, I didn't think I'd like this movie, but I I kind of did just because. The animation is really nice, and I like the story. I like the message it's trying to portray, but the presentation of the story d didn't work for me a lot. I didn't, and I don't like a lot of these characters, especially the side characters. And they're really annoying, and they take away from the pacing of the movie, making it a lot more slow than it actually is. But 
I will say I had a decent time with this movie. I liked it. I don't hate it. And I'm going to give this movie a, a B minus. Yeah, uh, I think I'm okay with that. And I think I'm okay with never seeing this movie ever again. I don't hate it. I just don't want to watch it again. But it's it's a fine movie. I think you, people can get enjoyment out of this. Kids will definitely get a kick out of it. But if you're a parent, if you're uh, someone watching a kid and you put it on, I don't think you'll hate yourself. I'll hate myself if I put on Frozen 2 because I think that movie was terrible. I think this movie's better than Frozen 2. But it's it's still a fine movie on itself. Um, yeah, so that's that. That's the movie review section on this whole shebang right here. And, um, yeah, that's it. So, um, subscribe to this channel. Give this video a like. You know, share it with other people if you like podcasts, if you like movie reviews. Um, that's the end of that for the movie review section.